Okay. I'd like to make a very logical and sensible video that should be helpful to absolutely anybody. Um, I'm going to be extremely succinct and straightforward. I'm going to say a lot of things that nobody else says in any other video. I have a few cameras here, just a few of the many that I have. And uh, let's talk about what the best camera is and let's shed some illumination on not hype and her hyperbole or any fanboy nonsense, okay? Anytime someone, uh, Nikon has done something stupid, I've made a video attacking him for it. Um, Fuji's made a few stupid mistakes, not, not many. And uh, I've brought up those mistakes. So let's talk about the best camera. What is the best camera? And I've actually brought out the, the four best examples here. Now, I'm going to pretend that this is the Fuji X-T2, even though it's not. <laughs> it's the Fuji X-T1. I was using the Fuji X-T2 for uh, six hours the other day, and uh, I've got a couple, yes, two of them, on uh, order. And um, me and my buddies that were actually shooting it, we were amazed at the fact that the autofocus tracking on the X-T2 with the improved firmware was even better than that of the Nikon D500. Let's first start off by saying that it may be the case in 10 years from now um, that there is a perfect camera that has the capability of doing all of this and more. I know for a fact that there's going to be adaptive resistance technology for radically increased dynamic range. That is actually the next frontier of a digital photography. What it will let you do is, uh, for example, take a picture of a really strongly backlit person and what it will do is it will apply adaptive resistance to uh, the light, the very strong backlighting and it will even out. So I call it dynamic range compression. It's basically the reason, 80% of the reason why we use fill flash photography and um, what gives the beauty and pop and the color saturation to wonderful outdoor shots of, you know, like say a sun setting behind somebody. That's future technology. Let's talk about what we have today. There is no perfect camera out there. What we do have as far as this video calling this the best camera in the world and there isn't one. Um, what we can say, and let's get to some really hardcore facts, let's first state the obvious. Ecosystem is incredibly important. You're never going to see that in any camera. A lot of people see something new and shiny by a new company, and uh, they'll look at the specification sheets and they'll buy it, and it turns out that, oh my god, the customer service is absolutely atrocious. Um, or even worse still, uh, this company doesn't even repair their own cameras, or this company doesn't even make their own lenses. That's one example. Design ergonomics. Obviously, you know, like underwear, everybody's got their own little thing that feels best, <laughs> right? You know, it, you know, someone might have gigantic ape hands, and someone might have little girly hands, or they don't want to hold up a big heavy camera. Um, it is the case, however, if you're going to be shooting really fast, huge primes. It doesn't matter if you're shooting mirrorless or DSLR. A big-ass fat lens, like a 300-2.8, is a big-ass fat fast lens. And so those things are unavoidable. And in this case, mirrorless advantages become absolutely null and void. Build quality, obviously incredibly important. I don't have the Nikon D3 out here, for example. That camera is eight years old. I mean, it's built like a brick house. Never before and never since has any camera been made tougher than an Nikon D3. And that is a 12 megapixel camera, obviously. It'll still make beautiful 20 by 30 uh, prints. Back in the day when it was released, it was over $6,000. Today it's worth about $900 to $1,000. That's a D3, not the D3S or the D3X. Okay, what about other things? Customer service, I already mentioned, but build quality, design ergonomics, ecosystem. There's no perfect camera and there never will be. All of these four I brought out are examples of the perfect camera. And then we're going to get to some hardcore irrefutable logic. And nobody else makes videos like this. And this is actually a video you should share. Whatever you think of me, this will be an intelligent, logical, as if the other ones I make aren't intelligent and logical. You know, sometimes I laugh. I make some joking videos. You know, I do have a sense of humor. Um, this should be the video that you should share. And... Um, it's uh, kind of like your shoes, too. I mean, there's no perfect set of shoes. I mean, if you're gonna, you know you're going to go out hiking in the woods, you're going to grab some boots, right? You know, if, uh, if you're going to show up for a job interview, you're going to put on those uh, freaky things with the little tassels and the shoe polish that, you know. If you're going to be go run, running around the block and getting some exercise, which I haven't done lately, you know, you put on your tennis shoes, right? There's no perfect pair of shoes, and there is no perfect camera. Anybody that, t and I've never said that in any video, 
ever said that. Ah, ha, 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 never said that in any video. And anybody that tells you something like that is an a-hole. And they're just a, a, illogical. They're either uh, a fanboy or they're an idiot or they're a liar. And neither one of those options is good. Okay? We have to confess that. This is undeniable and it's irrefutable. Saying that there is a right camera is like saying that there is one right perfect uh, focal length of lens. I've got tons and tons of lenses. If I know I'm going to go out and shoot a certain thing, I'm going to grab certain lenses. If you know you're going to climb a mountain and go hiking up on the side of the hill, I'm not going to be grabbing, you know, the penny loafers. <laughs> and I'm not going to bring the tennis shoes to the job interview. So there is no perfect camera. This is undeniable. This little camera over here, the Fuji, let me give you an example and then you're going to understand something that nobody else explains to you. Um, that's not to say that there aren't perfect cameras in general. In other words, this is the best example of what it is. This uh, Fuji X100T, they're going to come out with a replacement for this next year. I know for a fact that the X100T replacement, whatever they call it, it's going to have a 24 megapixel sensor and it's going to have better continuous autofocus. The, the autofocus on this really is pretty sucky. But this camera, it just makes professional photographers, it makes their heart melt because it does something that most of you people, don't take any offense at this, don't understand, and that's a leaf shutter. A leaf shutter means I could use the dumbest flashes, including any of my... This is the only camera I own that I can use any of my professional studio strobes that high-speed sync flash photography, 4,000th of a second, 2,000. I can't do that. Because it has a leaf shutter, I can use any stupid speed light. I can crush the ambient light. I can go out in, uh, in 2 p.m. or noonday, nasty, nasty, disgusting light. And it has a built-in three-stop ND filter. I can drop that in. I can do some flash. Even the little cheesy flash that's built into this thing, I can take some beautiful shots that none of these cameras, which cost a lot of damn money, can do. So that is the best camera for that. And... I don't care if you have a Nikon D5 or a Canon 1DX, none of those damn cameras, including any of these, can do what this can. And that is a hardcore feature. And there, why would you love this camera? It's got slow, you know, it, the, the autofocus on this thing is, it ain't so hot. But this camera is just got some super hardcore love because it does what none of these cameras can do. That is why this is the best camera in the world for what it is. This is what Leica should have made, but never did. Leica Digital is it's no good. No good at all. Um, I'm going to pretend like this is the Fuji X-T2. I got done testing it for six hours the other day. This is an X-T1. It's basically the same size, a little bit thicker, a little bit bigger. I know for a fact that that's going to be my future general grab grabbing camera. You know, that's going to be the one that I'm generally going to grab. The autofocus on it is insane. I know that for, I mean, we were just sitting around laughing like uh, crazy uh, schoolgirls, like, oh my god, you know, there's a motorcyclist came around the corner, and we tracked it, and it's like even the Nikon D500 with its amazing autofocus track, I mean, this is like, this is the camera that the bird and uh, wildlife shooters love dearly right now, this is like a 200mm to 500 or a 500mm to 4, this camera is just the, uh, incredible, the autofocus tracking is amazing. The near bottomless buffer of the Nikon D500, I mean, it'll just make you scream like a schoolgirl. Just scream. It's like, how is that even possible on this camera? I mean, I just sit there and hold that thing down. This camera will just make you scream. What, and I'm going to be doing the comparisons once I get the X-T2, but I've already tested the X-T2. Ex uh, extensively, but I do know one thing for absolute certain. Even though the autofocus tracking is better on the X-T2 than on the D500, the D500 in insane high ISO is just going to burn the Fuji X-T2 right into the ass, right into the dirt. I made a sample video where I couldn't even see my own damn hand in front of my face, and I did a handheld shot at 13th of a second. I've got really good hand-holding skills, okay? 13th of a second, I made a video like four or five, six months ago, something like that, and I showed that it took a really decent printable shot at 40,000 ISO, and I couldn't even see my damn hand in front of my face. And I know for the fact that the Fuji X-T2 will not be able to do that. Additionally so, on a negative 4 EV autofocus tracking, insane low light autofocus, if you're a club shooter, 
you know, you're shooting uh, raves or street shooters in the middle of the night. The Fuji X-T2, as wonderful it is, I got two of them on pre-order. I was incredibly impressed with the Fuji X-T2. But as impressive as the X-T2 is, and it's incredible autofocus tracking, and there also is, by the way, if you're a JPEG shooter, and I'm not, I shoot raw, but there are a lot of people out there that do shoot JPEGs. There is no better camera on this earth for out-of-camera, S-O-O-C, straight out-of-cameras, than the Fuji system, the Fuji film system. And the X-T2, oh my god, <laughs> so if you are a JPEG shooter, and I'm definitely not, okay, except for infrared photography, that's an exception, there is nothing better than the uh, Fuji X-T2, period. Or the Fuji system, actually, in general. Fuji's the best on uh, out-of-camera JPEGs. Fuji rules the world for out-of-camera JPEGs. Even the people that hate Fuji are like, Fuji's got the best out-of-camera JPEGs, okay? Nikon D810. Between these two cameras, by the way, I can dominate the world in absolutely any form of photography. Wedding, sports, action, wildlife, photojournalism, doesn't matter what. The Nikon D810 doesn't have that big of a buffer. It's a 36 megapixel camera. This is the camera. You see, you don't have an issue with models moving. Okay, you know, you're not tracking wildlife and it's not birds in flight where you're like, oh my god, there's the speckle breasted the cockatoo. Like, but, you know, the D500 can do this, the D810 cannot do that. This is the camera for weddings and portraiture. The absolute, that is, is that to say the Nikon D500 cannot do weddings and portraiture? The, the X-T2 can't do that? No, it's not the same. It means that, that is what it is, rules the world on currently. Okay? That is what it rules the world on. Portraiture and landscape. It has no AA filter. This has no AA filter. For landscapes and uh, portraiture and weddings, uh, D810. Now, if it's going to be uh, the, uh, the, uh, the meeting after the wedding, uh, where we're going to be cutting the cake and everybody's going to be doing their dancing jig, you always got to bring, as a professional, two cameras to a wedding shot. You know, I'm going to put the D810 aside, and I'm going to grab the D500. Between these two cameras, any and every photographic situation can be dominated, but there is no camera that is perfect at it all. The D810 is king of portraiture and of landscape. D500, sports, action, wildlife, just period. Low light, insane, high, ultra. The only camera that's actually better, it's super, 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 super insane high ISO, is an Icon D5. That's the only thing the D5 is good at. That thing is an overpriced turd, excuse me for saying that, Nikon. For $6,500, if you are, you know, unless you need super, super high, I, you know, unless you're like peeping around the streets and you need like 50,000 ISO, there is no reason on this earth to buy the Nikon D5. None. $6,500, even at half that price, I would never even consider buying it. Uh, right now, um, and I've made a few things that Fuji has done wrong, right now, Fuji is the only company and I, I, I choose my words very carefully here. Fuji is the only company right now doing almost everything right. The wrong thing that they're doing is their flash, and that you have to have two of them. It doesn't work off radio. It's made by METS. Uh, the other thing, they may come out with it this year, is a lack of a TTL cable because, you know, <clears throat> big old flash. The worst lighting in the world is a, a speed light on top of your camera. Just period. You're, you're just an idiot. Unless you're a photojournalist, you're just shooting, you know, strictly news. Having a speed light sitting on the hot shoe, especially a little mirrorless camera. No, 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 no bueno. So Fuji needs to rock out a TTL cable and their lack of a good raw converter. You know, the, the fools that have been complaining about the waxy skin tones on the Fujis, they've been using the wrong raw converter or the old version of Lightroom. Even the current version of Lightroom is not that hot. They should, yeah, any Fuji raw shooter should be using Iridient developer. And Iridient, I've, I've been updated now. Now he says that... Uh, he is going to have uh, a Windows version of Iridian Developer this year. That's what he said I saw on his uh, Twitter page. The guy that, the one person only that makes the best Fuji Rock Converter. He, uh, he said that on his uh, Twitter page. So that's where I got that information. So all of these are the best camera. The X100T will do what none of these cameras can do, including any of the rest of them. No? Yeah, the X70 can do that, but this is the best version of that, the leaf shutter. The X-T2, oh my god, the X-T2 was shocking. The D500 will still dominate it in insane high ISO and uh, ultra low light autofocus tracking acquisition. Um, I don't mention Sony in here because they don't even rank to me. Um, there's no perfect camera and there never will be. 
there might be in uh, 15 or 10 years, you know, some super magical camera that will have a leaf shutter, unlikely, and will be the best at sports action wildlife and the best at portraiture, and will be super tiny. You know, that may be 10 years down the road. Right now, that is not the case. Right now, it is as much now as it ever was. No perfect camera, and, um, you know, everything shifts place on cameras, too, twice a year because someone will roll out something. Canon just rolled out a turd. People are like, well, that Canon camera is going to be great. It's like, well, yeah, it'll be a fine camera, but it's got a 2016 price tag on it, but it is rocking 2008 compact flash card UHS-1 card tag. I mean, I, you know, the, sure, the camera will work fine, but why, are you, you know, $3,500 for a, a retro camera from the year 2011 or 2012? No. No bueno. No dice. That's uh, muy malo. Isn't that the correct Spanish uh, saying for that? So this is what you need to understand about the perfect camera. Perfect camera does not exist. Each one of these is perfect for its own reasons. And there is no perfect pair of shoes. You know, the shoes for hiking is not the shoes you go for job interview. The shoe for, uh, you know, jogging around the corner, the tennis shoes, is not the shoes you could be climbing the mountain with. So cameras are no different than, you know, types of shoes. Job interview shoes, jogging shoes, tennis shoes, uh, Hiking shoes, a snow snow boot shoes, it's no difference. None. None at all. Bye. If you like this video, you can drop a donation or you can send me a big fat pizza because one of the few pleasures I have left in the world is a big pizza. <laughs> Just kidding. No, I'm not. Bye.